Welcome to this webinar about our TwinKit OPC UA supplement product. In this webinar, we, my colleague Michael Knossala and, and I, Sven Goldstein, would like to give you an overview about security best practices, the concepts behind, and also give you a getting started for the different components of TwinCAD OPC UA. Let me first of all give you an overview about the different layers in which we have implemented OPC UA into our products. Let's have a look at the automation level where our industrial PCs are uh, performing their duty. Every backup controller is equipped with a free of charge OPC UA server that offers diagnostics information about the industrial PC. In addition, we also have our TwinCAD OPC UA client and server applications, which offer OPC UA access to or from the TwinCAD real time. Because of the internal communication architecture of TwinCAD, those applications can also be installed and operated on an edge device, for example, to retrofit existing machines. With TwinCAD HMI, we have our own HTML5-based visualization platform, which also has an OPC UA client integrated. At the same time, our TwinCAD scope also has an OPC UA client in order to do charting and diagnostics of third-party devices. And on the I.O. level here, we have our EK9160, our so-called IoT coupler, which has an OPC UA server integrated in order to have an easy access and secure access to I.O. information. And last but not least, we have the products and technologies in order to do cloud connectivity with OPC UA, for example, via OPC UA PubSub MQTT. So let's have a look at what's inside of TwinCAD OPC UA. There are three major components. First of all, the TwinCAD OPC UA server provides access to symbols from the TwinCAD real time. Such symbols can be simple variables or data structures or methods that should be called by an OPC UA client. The TwinCAD real time can either be a PSC or TwinCAD 3C++ application or even an IO task with a process image. The TwinCAD OPC UA client lets you access other OPC UA servers and read write variables or call methods. The client is available as PSC open function blocks or an easy to configure IO device. The TwinCAD OPC UA gateway has two basic functionalities. First of all, it wraps the TwinCAD OPC UA server and provides an free of charge OPC COM DA server interface. And in addition, it lets you aggregate multiple TwinCAD OPC UA servers, and we will get to know that functionality in a little more detail later on. So what does a typical deployment scenario of the TwinCAD OPC UA product look like? So typically, you will install the client or server application directly on the controller, so you don't require any sp uh, separate hardware. Access to the TwinCAD real-time will be done via our back-off ADS protocol, which is capable of being routed through the TCP IP network. And this functionality will lead us directly to the next deployment scenario. In this second scenario, the TwinCAD OPC UA client and server application will be installed and operated on an edge device. The underlying automation controller will execute the TwinCAD real-time. And please note that this can also be an existing device, which you, for example, want to retrofit with OPC UA technology. So, for example, in a brownfield scenario. Connectivity between the edge device and the underlying controller will be handled again by our back of ADS protocol, which will be in this uh, scenario routed through the TCP IP network. And we will also later see why this might be a very interesting scenario in some network environments, for example, when it comes to the TwinKit OPC UA gateway, which of course can also be installed on the edge device in order to aggregate multiple underlying TwinCAD OPC UA servers and make them available either via OPC COM DA or via OPC UA. Let's have a closer look at the different security mechanisms that OPC UA has to offer. An OPC UA server provides different so-called endpoints to connect uh, client applications. The endpoint specifies which security mechanisms the server offers and which should be used for connectivity with an OPC UA client. And depending on the installed server version and the version of the OPC UA specification that is being implemented by the server application, different endpoints can be available to connect to. So first of all, there's the so-called NUN-NUN endpoint, which offers no transport security, but additional um, security mechanisms may be available on the application layer. The green highlighted endpoints here um, offer state-of-the-art security mechanisms. So, Newest uh, security algorithms uh, 
high key lengths um, for, for connectivity with, between the client and the server application and to secure the connectivity. So a client has the possibility to select an endpoint or a secure endpoint which offers signing of messages or encryption of messages or even both. And we will see on the next slide uh, what that actually means um, when you look at the OPC UA communication on the wire. The orange highlighted um, endpoints here offer deprecated security policies which have been renewed or which have been enhanced in newer versions of the OPC UA specification. So those um, security policies are disabled um, per default in our latest Twinkit OPC UA server product and also the none-none endpoint that you see here is disabled per default because of um, certification and security uh, purposes. But of course you can activate um, re or reactivate those endpoints again um, in our server configuration file which is XML based. So if you have an OPC UA client application that requires those endpoints and cannot handle and are any uh, newer um, secure endpoints, then you can enable that, although we do not recommend to do so, because you want to use um, state-of-the-art security settings um, and endpoints. So we just talked about the different endpoints and their security policies. If you trace a client-server communication on the wire, for example, with Wireshark, you will see the difference between the security policies. So when communicating via the none none endpoint, the communication is clear text and can be read on the wire. In this example here, you will see that an OPC UA client issued a read request for multiple variables that are uh, readable in clear text on the wire. So because the communication is not uh, secured, the communication is not encrypted. If you use the sign endpoint, you will, see, you will still see that the communication is clear text, but you will see that the whole data package here is slightly larger because it has uh, the signature at the end of the packet. And when you do a sign and encrypt communication, you will see that nothing is clear text anymore because the whole communication is encrypted and um, a third party or a man in the middle cannot uh, read, parse or intercept or modify um, the communication. So one of the recipes for success is, uh, and the central part of OPC UA for sure is the topic security. So OPC UA integrates multiple state-of-the-art security mechanisms. So let's have a look at how transport security looks like in OPC UA. So we earlier talked about a trust relationship. What does that mean? So whenever an OPC UA client wants to connect to an OPC UA server, he does that by choosing a server endpoint. The endpoint specifies which security mechanisms and settings should be used for this kind of communication. In this example here, this client, the Twinket OPC UA client, wants to communicate or select it, the basic 256 SHA 256 endpoint, and he wants to use message signing and message encryption uh, for the communication. So in order for this to work, client and server have to trust each other, so they have to build up a so-called trust relationship. So how does that work? A client and a server application both have their own certificates. So the client has a client certificate and the server has a, certi a server certificate. So whenever the OPC UA client issues uh, or creates a session, so a so-called uh, create session request, the client sends his own certificate in this request. And at that point, the server application that receives the certificate has the possibility to check its internal trust list to see if it uh, trust this uh, client certificate. And if so, the server sends in this response, sends his own server certificate and the client at the same time has the possibility to check its own trust list um, to find out if it trusts um, the server that he currently uh, issued the create session request to. And if both applications trust each other, um, this communication is being done um, by the client to and, and the client secures uh, further requests using the server certificate and the server answers and secures uh, the responses with the corresponding client certificate. So this known process from the IT world works very well but might involve some administrative overhead because you always have to uh, establish this trust relationship. So let me give you an example. Just like most of the OPC UA applications out there, our Twinkit OPC UA client and server generate so-called self-signed certificates per default, uh, which means that they are not signed by a central certificate authority. 
We have learned that every client and server have to manage their own trust list in order to define which client or server application to trust or which one to reject. And you see that exactly here. Um, so in this example, you see that both applications have their own trust lists. The client trusts the server certificate and the server trusts the client certificate. Of course, if you want to add an additional client to this kind of communication, the server has to trust, um, has to trust the client certificate of this additional OPC UA client. And if additional OPC UA clients become available that want to talk or communicate with this server, um, the server needs to build up a trust relationship with this client again. So this process, you can imagine that it doesn't scale very well and will become a nightmare uh, when there are hundreds um, or even thousands of different OP OPC UA applications that want to communicate with each other. And remember, clients uh, or in general certificates also have an expiry date, which means that they have to be renewed after one year, two years, depending on the settings of the client or server application. The solution for this is to use a so-called certificate authority. The certificate authority signs every OPC UA um, application certificate. And that being said, a client or server application now only has to trust the certificate authority instead of every application certificate individually. In addition, the certificate authority also maintains a so-called certificate revocation list, in short CRL which is available for all applications and includes a list of revoked certificates. So thanks to the CRL, an administrator can revoke certificates, for example, if a device has been compromised and the OPC UA client that runs on that device should not be able to connect to the OPC UA server anymore. So let me give you an example how the configuration of an OPC UA client and server might look like if they have certificates that have been signed by a, a central certificate authority. In this example, we have the software UA expert um, as the OPC UA client and our Twinket OPC UA server as the server application. Both applications have their own certificate, which has been signed by a common certificate authority. At the same time, both applications also trust the certificate authority and have a copy of the certificate revocation list internally available. So to configure the Twinket OPC UA server, its own certificate has been placed in its respective folders. So there is one folder for the public key uh, of the certificate and there is one folder for the private key of the certificate. So in order to trust the certificate authority, there is a separate folder for that as well. So where the public key um, of the certificate authority resides and the same goes also for the certificate revocation list. So if you, let's say, double click um, the server certificate on, on the Windows uh, operating system, you will see information about the certificate. So you will clearly see, OK, there is a expiry date of the certificate. Um, you will see the certificate authority that has issued and signed um, the certificate. So you will see a couple of uh, certi uh, certificate information. And this is here. It's just an example how this uh, may look like. So. On the UA expert side, the configuration is identical. So there's also a folder for the public key of the UA expert certificate for the private key. And of course, the trust relationship for the certificate authority. And um, yeah, if you double click uh, the UA expert certificate, you will also see its information on, on the Windows side. So whenever uh, the UA expert uh, now connects to the uh, Twinket OPC UA server, the trust relationship is automatically handled and established um, via this mechanism. So although certificate authorities provide a way better and more secure way of managing certificates, there is still one problem, or let's say challenge, that remains. So certificate distribution and renewal. The OPC Foundation has addressed this challenge by introducing the so-called Global Discovery Service, or in short, GDS. So first of all, a GDS maintains a list of all registered um, server applications. So this list can, for example, be taken by OPC UA clients to find a particular server um, that it wants to communicate with. But it also maintains a certificate authority uh, with its own public key, of course, and with its certificate revocation list. And this certificate authority can be used by OPC UA client or server applications to acquire their own certificate. So the GDS has an own standardized OPC UA server interface, and this server interface can be used by any OPC UA application to trigger actions. 
So for example, to retrieve an own certificate, to find uh, server applications, to renew certificates, uh, or maybe to get this, uh, the current version or the latest version of the certificate revocation list. So client server applications have two basic functionalities um, or mechanisms um, to, to do that. So there's the push and the pull concept, but it would be, um, I think it would be too much for this webinar to um, explain both concepts in, in much more detail. So OPC UA does not only secure the transport channel, but it also offers different security mechanisms on the application layer. An OPC UA client can authenticate at the server by using a so-called identity token. An identity token can be a username password uh, combination, it can be a user certificate, and the server then has the possibility to set different access rights for a single user account or maybe user groups. So in this example here we have the administrator user that is known to the server and it is configured on the server that this administrator user should have access to all the uh, three namespaces, uh, read-write access to all the three namespaces um, on the server. An additional user account, the operator here, should only have access to the main program of the PSC application, but not, no access to uh, the namespaces PSC1 and PSC2. And at the same time, we have a guest user account, um, which should only have access to a particular data structure here within the main program on the PSC3 namespace. So such mechanisms uh, can be configured on the Twinket OPC UA server and are available in our current um, Twinket OPC UA release. So let's have a look at the typical authentication options that OPC UA has to offer when a client connects to a server application. So there is, of course, anonymous access, and it provides, let's say, the least uh, security and uh, does not offer any user authentication on application level. Username password access uh, provides a way of identifying a particular user on the server application and set, for example, like we saw uh, one slide earlier, um, access rights for particular namespaces or uh, nodes. In our Twinkit OPC UA server product, this type of, of authentication can be either based on operating system um, mechanisms, for example, the uh, local uh, user store of Microsoft Windows or Active Directory, or the local user store of Twinket BSD, but it can also be a user account um, that is only known to the Twinket OPC UA server application and not known to the operating system. So certificate-based user authentication works in the same way or a similar way than transport security. So the OPC UA server has to trust the user certificate and the user certificate can either be a self-signed certificate or a CA signed user certificate with the same advantages or disadvantages that we have seen earlier um, when it comes to certificates on transport layer. So now I would like to hand over to my colleague, uh, Michael Knossala, and he will give you a getting started into our client, server, and gateway applications. Michael. Thank you, Sven. So now we want to continue with a few getting started tips and start this section with the Twinkit OPC UA server. One of the first questions that come up is, how do we make PLC variables accessible over OPC UA? In the Twinkit engineering, so-called attributes can be used to um, make, um, like in this sample, uh, simple um, data types like integer or structure types available via OPC UA. Additionally, the download of the TMC file must be ticked in the project settings of the PLC project so that the, the TMC file, which is basically um, a symbol file, is downloaded to the target system. The OPC UA server reads in the TMC file with every start and is then configured to make only the specified variables accessible for connecting OPC UA clients. On the right side, we see here um, a sample of um, a connected OPC UA client, the UA expert, which has um, our configuration um, that we talked about before um, accessible for OPC UA clients. The Twinkit OPC UA server then communicates with the PLC runtime via the ADS protocol. 
Um, and then two ways of this communication, we want to have a closer look on the following slides. So um, the first way of communication that we want to have a look at is polling. So what is happening when there is a polling communication? The Office UI client re sends reading requests in a specified interval to the OPC UI server. The server then um, communicates with the PLC runtime in the same interval, so as we see here. So a question that comes up is, what can be the uh, disadvantage of such a communication? So um, maybe if we have um, a variable that is not changing um, that often, um, the communication takes place always, even if this variable is not changing or the value of the variable is not changing. For such, for such cases, OPC UA offers a more elegant way of communication, the so-called subscriptions. The first thing that has to be mentioned on this slide is that the communication via subscription is shown a little bit simplified. If a client has registered a subscription on a server, he's notified when the observed variable changes. This prevents that the same value for a variable is communi communicated multiple times. So as we see here in this simplified um, overview of the communication, um, we have um, on the left side um, the time interval between um, the OPC UA server communicates um, value changes to the client is called publish interval. In this publish interval, the OPC UA server is um, sampling the PLC in a specified sampling rate. And now it is depending on the queue size how many value changes um, the server communicates to the client. So if we have a queue size of one, the OPC UA server will only communicate the last value change to the client. So we have to be aware that the queue size is big enough so that every value change is communicated back to the client. And if there is no value change within a publish interval, only a keep alive is communicated from server to client so that the client knows the subscription is still alive. Earlier in this webinar, we already learned a lot about certificates from our colleague Sven Goldstein, and we now want to have a closer look on this topic with the example of setting up a connection to the Twinkit OPC UA server. In this case, a client, the UA expert, tries to connect to the Twinkit OPC UA server, particularly the basic 256 SHA-256 sign and encrypt endpoint, and presents his certificate during the connection setup. The server, as we learned before, tries to verify the certificate with his trust list. Because we are connecting for the first time now, um, the server does not know the client certificate and terminates the connection. This can be also seen with the bad security checks failed error message that we see here in the uh, UA Expert OPC UA client. The rejected client certificate is saved by the server in a folder that contains all the rejected client certificates that from, from OBC UA clients that tried to connect and where the connection was terminated. There are various possibilities to trust this certificate manually so that the server does not terminate the connection the next time the, tri uh, the client tries to connect. The first possibility to establish the trust between server and client is to copy the certificate that has been saved in the rejected folder to the trusted folder on, on file level. So the server uh, directory, as you can see here, um, contains a um, certificate directory where, for example, the rejected and trusted certificates are saved. If we copy this certificate now to the trusted folder, um, the server trusts the client and the, connection, the next connection attempt will not be terminated because of the certificate. Another possibility is the certificates folder in the server namespace. If the user is already connected with another OPC UA client, 
like in the sample also the UA expert. There you can see also the rejected folder where our certificate from maybe another UA expert, OBC UA client, is um, stored. And we have a method called move. And with this move method, method, we are able to change the location of this certificate to the trusted folder. And last but not least, we have also the Trinket OBC UA configurator. Um, which delivers a list of all client certificates the server knows and um, displays the status if they are trusted or rejected. And a rejected certificate can be saved to the trust list with a menu entry. And here we want to underline again that the advantages of CA signed certificates compared to self signed certificates. As in this sample, um, we are using self-signed certificates. And as you might imagine, this whole process um, would be done for every new OPC UA client that is connecting. And if we have a trust relationship with a CA-signed certificate, um, this process would be done once on server side. And of course, the client certificates have be, would have been um, also CA-signed. Earlier in this webinar, we, of, we have also talked about different ways of access control and want to have a closer look on this now with a concrete sample. We could make our life easy and use the standard anonymous user, as you can see here in the Twinkit OPC configurator. And this anonymous user has full access by design. So everyone that is connecting with this user would have full access to the whole server. From a security point of view, this has, be, uh, this has the potential to be fatal. That is the reason why we want to introduce the different possibilities of access control here. When a new user is configured in the Trinket OPC Way configurator, the way of authentication must be chosen first. As already mentioned before, we have three different possibilities. Server authentication, the oper operating system respective um, Active Directory, or the users usage of user certificates. Additionally, um, the administrator should be aware not to give um, a user root rights. So um, as you can see here in this screenshot, if a user is configured as root user, he has automatically um, full access to the server and our access control configuration would not be successful anymore. So the first possibility that we have with our access control is to restrict the user's access to the server on namespace level. So in this sample, we are also using user groups um, additionally. Um, a user group can be used to um, configure multiple users on the same times, on the same time with the same rights. So um, I will come back to that um, in a few moments again. So the user named user1 is assigned to the group users. Every user of the users group is allowed to see the PLC1 namespace and the server namespace. So as you can see here in the UA expert, the user does only see the, the PLC1 namespace and the server namespace. If another user is created and declared as the member of the group users, he gets the same restriction as user1 without the need of any additional configuration. Additionally, um, to the restriction on namespace level, there is also the possibility to restrict access on node level. This enables differentiation down to a single node level between different users. The user in our example gets access to the PLC1 node, the main node and the um, encounter variable in the main. So the user does only see the encounter variable. Every other variable that is accessible via OPC UA cannot be seen by this OPC UA client. So if a OPC UA client connects with this user rights, with the guest user, he can only see this variable and uh, not any other variable, even if it is accessible via OPC UA. So as you might imagine, um, access control and variable level can get very complex with an increasing number of variables and users. Our recommendation is to stay on namespace level with restrictions 
as long as possible. But of course, there could be the need to configure access on variable, variable level for different use cases. Um, another important fact is maybe um, that the security configuration is imported by the server as an XML file. So the Trinket OPC con configurator is um, the user interface to um, yeah, change this configuration and change the, this XML file. Um, but it is also um, possible um, to create and edit this XML file in your own application. So now we want to switch from server to the client. And um, the question that might arise is, how do I connect the Trinket OPC UA client with a third-party OPC UA server? As we learned before, um, there are basically two different ways to configure client communication in Twinkit. On the one hand, there are the PLC open function blocks that can be used in the PLC code. And on the other hand, there is the possibility to configure the Twinkit OPC UA client as an I.O. device. In order to uh, introduce the second option, we will now give you a sample of a connection um, to a uh, Siemens S7-1500, which runs an OPC UA server. In the settings of the OPC UA client device, a connection with the signed and encrypted basic 256 endpoint is created and the user credentials are set. If all the connection details are provided, we can use the add notes dialog to browse um, through the server namespace and um, choose all variables that we want to um, yeah, configure in, IO, in our I.O. device in our um, PLC project or in our Trinket solution. So in this sample, we are choosing two counter variables from the Siemens server. Um, and if we have added these variables um, to the OPC UA I.O. client, um, we can configure them only for reading, only for writing, or maybe for both. And um, yeah, this is of course um, also depending on the server configuration, for example, when the server has a read-only configuration for some variables. So as you can see here, um, we now have configured the first counter variable for reading and writing, and the second one only for reading. Um, as you might know from the Trinket archite architecture, we can easily connect um, the reading and writing variables with PLC variables. So um, if we read a variable from, from, an, from an OPC UA server, um, we can connect this variable um, to a variable in the PLC. And the other way around, we can also connect um, a PLC variable to a, an output that um, has to be written to the OPC UA server. So um, to sum this a little bit up, um, we have here um, the configuration um, and less programming to use all of the um, possibilities OPC uh, UA communication gives us. Um, one of these um, OPC UA virtual devices that organize the um, OPC UA client devices um, can contain different OPC UA client devices. So as you can see here, the client one. Every of these client devices stands for one connection to a OPC UA server. For each of these clients, we can configure the communication. Um, we have basically three different ways to do so. Um, as we already, already learned before, polling, subscriptions, and we can also use trigger. Trigger can be helpful if we want to have some event-based communication and um, a specific PLC event should trigger um, the reading or writing of a variable on the OPC UA server. So let's have a look on the Twinkit OPC UA gateway now. One of the use cases of the OPC UA gateway um, is, as I again already mentioned during this presentation, the server aggregation. In this example, we have two controllers with integrated OPC UA servers down here. These two servers are aggregated with the Twinkit OPC UA gateway. If a client is connecting to this OPC UA gateway, um, he is able to access both underlying servers with the same connection. 
Um, now we can see here also um, the configuration surface of the Trinket OPC Way Gateway, where the connection to the OPC Way server is configured. Um, again, to say um, the connection is only configured on gateway side. So the client has only take care of his connection to the gateway and the underlying connection to, the, to both of the OPC Way servers is completely managed by the Trinket OPC Way gateway. In line with the topic of server aggregation, we want to compare server aggregation and server discovery shortly. In case of server discovery, an OPC Way client queries the local discovery service, also known as LDS, which OPC Way servers have registered registered, sorry, um, on this LDS. But after getting the connection information for the registered OPC Way servers with this query, the OPC Way client is connecting directly to the Trinket OPC Way server. So from a firewall point of view, the connection will always be set up directly with the Trinket OPC Way server. And this is also the main difference to the server aggregation. If we talk about, uh, about server ag aggregation again, the Trinket OPC Way client is connecting to the Trinket OPC Way gateway. So the advantage becomes clear real soon. There is only a single connection needed for an OPC Way client to get access to all of the servers that are connected with the Trinket OPC Way gateway. So from a firewall point, point of view, we also have one um, connection to the gateway and not multiple connections over the network. Now I want to hand back to my colleague who will give you a short comprehension of today's webinar and will additionally conclude with some security recommendations from our side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, so yeah, Michael has given you a very good overview um, about a getting started um, for Twinkit OPC UA client and server and also our gateway. And during this webinar, we have learned a lot about the different security principles and settings in our Twinkit OPC UA world. We have talked about security on transport and application layer, and we have seen which advantages CA signed certificates bring compared with self signed certificates. We have also learned what a so called global discovery service is and where it might help to reduce management overhead when it comes to the management of certificates. Michael has shown you some getting started tips for our client, server and gateway applications. And before we finish this webinar, let me just give you some final words of advice when setting up OPC UA communication in your network env environment. So first of all, make sure to deactivate the auto trust for client certificates in our server configuration file. This setting is, uh, has been pre-configured because of usability purposes. So, Client applications should have an easy and fast way to establish a communication with our Twinket OPC UA server. This is why we have enabled um, this auto trust uh, for all client certificates per default, but we highly recommend customers to disable um, this setting because of security purposes. The second uh, thing is to deactivate anonymous login uh, in our server configuration files so that you can use a, an a real identity token like username password combinations or a user certificate to always uh, let a client authenticate at the Twinket OPC UA server. The third uh, point here is um, to only use high security endpoints. Uh, so we have early, uh, earlier seen in this webinar that the server also already um, offers state-of-the-art security endpoints uh, to clients to establish a secure communication with the OPC UA server. The non-none endpoint that we have seen is deactivated per default and we highly recommend to leave it deactivated um, in order to have a secure OPC UA communication between the client and server application. Please also think about using CA signed certificates whenever possible instead of self signed certificates. So we have seen that there are a lot of advantages uh, when it comes to certificate authorities and to the management of certificates. So certificate revocation list, renewal of certificates. Um, it is way easier to handle if you have a certificate authority in place. So also, so Michael has, has uh, talked about um, the gateway application and he also talked about firewall settings. Um, so please make sure to restrict TCP IP, uh, IP access 
only um, to required IP addresses, so only to the IP address of your OPC UA client, for example. So the Windows operating system and Twinkit BSD give you plenty of options um, to configure the corresponding firewall on the operating system side. Last but not least, um, you should also give some, some uh, access control lists some uh, thought. So we have seen that it is possible to restrict access um, on namespace level or on node level to certain users or user groups. So Michael have, has shown you how to do that in our Twinkit OPC UA configurator. So and this gives you a very good uh, way to restrict access only to certain user accounts or certain user groups for your information that you share on your Twinkit OPC UA server. So we are now at the end of this webinar and uh, we thank you guys so much for watching this webinar and for following this, uh, these 40 minutes uh, for, full of information regarding OPC UA as a technology. So if there are any unanswered questions left in the GoToWebinar chat window, uh, we will answer those questions um, after the webinar via email. So we will stay in contact and uh, thank you again for watching and see you in the next webinar.